Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. Her name is Nella Anthony, and she is a coach, and she has an incredible, I mean incredible, I mean incredible story to tell, and there is so much that she has to share that is just going to warm your heart and really open you to see life in a different perspective. So Nella Anthony, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, I am a speaker and a coach, and my focus is on just women empowerment and mental health. And my story is quite a bit of a story. <laughs> so my um, my background is I'm Tamil Canadian. So my parents um, came here as refugees, and they came from an island called Sri Lanka. So it's a little island off of India and, you know, beautiful island. And um, unfortunately, the reason why they had to flee is because there was a civil war that happened and it was a 26 year civil war. So it happened from 1983 all the way to 2009. And this civil war was initially, essentially it's the government against the minority group of Tamils. And unfortunately, this war started when my mother was 14 and my father was in his early 20s. And Unfortunately, they had to go through the war. They witnessed, they went through it for four, four, four to five years of their life. So when my mom, imagine my mother is 14 and she went through this until she came to Canada around 18, 19. Yeah. Same thing like was with my dad. He came here in Canada when he was like 20, 22, 23 ish. So during key pivotal moments of their life, they were, they were more concerned about whether or not they're going to be killed or not. And to give you context, my mother's region, her region, she was worried about, you know, dodging bombs in the middle of the night. She remembers waking up and hearing planes dropping bombs. And instead of sleeping at, you know, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., she, her and her family had to run to the bunker. So imagine you're 14 years old and you're just running for your life. And you don't know what, and you always know that's going to happen again and again and again. And you don't know if you're going to be targeted on the way home from school by the military and army. And my dad, who lived in the city, you know, he people were the army and the police were IDing people, trying to pinpoint whether you're Tamil or not. And these people would then be, you know, arrested, held for ransom, tortured, God knows what. And so imagine living through this for such pivotal years of your life, development years. Yeah. And by God's grace, my grandparents had enough money or so to kind of help their kids leave. So my parents came to Canada, but even though they were literally on the other side of the world, the the fear, the anxiety, survival skill, like that doesn't go away. They had that. Now couple that in with get, you know, getting married and having kids, three daughters, in fact. Right. So especially my poor mother, right? Like at 14, 15 years old you're a child and you're running from bombs and you don't know if soldiers are going to target you because you're a girl or they're going to take you, kill you, murder you, rape you, whatever. Imagine. And now you have three daughters that you have to worry about in a country and in a world that hasn't acknowledged that the war happening in your home country right. is not okay. It was never acknowledged. Yeah. And there is an article where the UN says that not intervening in the Sri Lankan war is their one of their biggest failures. And it is a failure because so many people died. Over 100,000 people died, confirmed to be dead. And yeah. another 800,000 were displaced, meaning we don't know where those people went. Oh, wow. Those people could either be dead, missing, or they just fled the country and we weren't, you know. So look at those numbers alone. And no one acknowledged it. So growing up as a kid, there is this fear of, you know, people, are they going to say something about me because I'm Tamil? Because my parents were telling us everything was what, what their, the other country was doing is wrong. All these bad things are happening is wrong. But no one else around me was acknowledging it. Yeah. So I was so confused. During the news, nothing would be said. I come home. I hear all this terrible stuff. See things on the news. Ba kids dead on the, you know, on the floor. Women crying. Men getting hurt. All these terrible, terrible stories. But it wasn't being acknowledged anywhere. Mm -mm. So imagine growing up as a kid, a child, and questioning that. And the and for, and I just had a trouble connecting with my ethnicity as a result of that because I wasn't sure deep down. Like I didn't think what we 
anything we did was wrong, but yet no one else was acknowledging it. So yeah. something had to be wrong, right? So subconsciously, I just disconnected from my ethnicity. Like I just, I would kind of be too fr- afraid to say it out loud. Yeah. And I have this memory of this kid at school. He was from my um, country as well, but he was of the other ethnicity, Singalese. And yeah. he would bring newspaper clippings. And he'd be like, look what our army did today. Or look who we killed today. And the, I remember in, I was in grade seven when the war finally ended and the government won. He said, oh, we won and we killed your leader. So imagine like I'm in grade seven in front of all my friends and my teacher was present. No one spoke up. No one stepped in and said, hey, this is not okay. Yeah. No one did. So imagine like I couldn't, I didn't know how to, like I didn't know what to do. Like I just sat there. Right. I felt so uncomfortable. Like, I don't know, in my head, I was thinking, are people going to think that I'm a bad person yeah. because of my ethnicity, but I didn't do anything wrong. No one did any, like, it was just so much confusion growing up. Yeah. So couple that with, you know, my parents feeling survivor's guilt, needing to know every cont- like detail and thing going on in my life, as well as my sisters, that is a result of their PTSD from the war. Yeah. Right. Survivor's oh, sure. guilt detail needing to you know that sense of control because they didn't have that control yeah now they have three kids so control is the way that they can mitigate anything ever bad happening Mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. that's amazing go ahead no and and like couple that in with i'm the eldest so for me um there's this need of you need to excel you need to perform for your sisters for your family for the kids that are not going to live tomorrow Literally, that's what it was. You're not, you know, you should be grateful because the kids back home, they they don't have any food. They don't know if they're going to wake up tomorrow. Right. And it was this need to perform and, and just do well for, you know, to make sure everything that my parents didn't, you know, go through was in vain, to make sure yes. all the poor kids and everyone else back home that don't have my luxuries, you know, aren't in vain. Yeah. And that's just what my life became about just doing well excelling performing literally performing for other people you must have felt empty inside in a sense because you probably felt like you were doing everything for everyone else your parents had high expectations on you you probably felt a need to reach those high expectations you know you saw what was happening to so many people in your country and you wanted to not you know not have to follow in the footsteps where being trapped where you couldn't excel you needed to do something probably, you probably felt like you needed to do something powerful and wonderful with your life. You needed to be an exception. You know, you wanted to, you know, make a change in some sort of way, but then you have, you know, parents, you know, can mean well, but when they're so overpowering for their children to do well, it's sometimes, you know, their children end up doing well, but it leaves a damper in their brain. It leaves a footprint, you know, that just doesn't go away. And, and it could, it could really sometimes, you know, hurt a person's self-worth, self-esteem, you know, because nothing you ever do is good enough sometimes, you know, and how, how did it feel coming from seeing all these things happen and then having your parents, you know, they meant well, but they were very controlling, you know, how did this affect your life? So for me, I, I had a great childhood. Like my parents gave me everything I ever wanted. Yeah. They were amazing, super supportive, but there was this, like you mentioned, this need to meet expectations and part of it was on them, but part of it, I placed expectations on myself though. Mm -hmm. So it's not all on them. So for me, it's more so just needing to excel, perform because, you know, because I understood what everything's going on with. So for me, if I didn't do well on a test, if I didn't pass a swimming class exam, Mm-hmm. I was harder on myself than my parents were hard than on me. Right. So, and this is something that my parents, you know, kind of flagged to me later on. They're like, yeah, we, you were harder on yourself than we were. We just wanted you to do well. Like we didn't want you to like, you know, yeah, go crazy doing it. But yeah. at the time growing up, it was that need to, okay, I got to be better. I got to do this because of A, B, C, D. So for me, yeah, like I was harder on myself because my identity became, about just getting approval and validation yeah and hitting tick boxes so yes it was numbing it got to the point where you know fast forward me in university where I got into engineering school great Mm -hmm. I was getting 
internships, like easy, perfect, amazing. But it felt I wasn't happy. Like I just felt like no matter what I when I tried to speak up, it didn't go well. And what I mean by that, it was, you know, it didn't reside well because my family and the people around me weren't used to me speaking up because they're so used to me just doing. Right. So when I would speak up from, you know, in front of my friends and family, I would get pushed back being like, hey, this is like, why are you doing this? You're causing problem or hey, you're being selfish or hey, you're being, you know, the B word. Like what, what's what are you doing? And for me, it's like, OK, well, I'm doing all the things well. I'm doing what you guys want me to. Yeah. And yet I'm not getting any approval or the approval that I that will resonate the validation, with validation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not getting the validation. And on top of that, when I speak up, I'm kind of told hush, hush. So I got to the point where I was like, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point? So a part of me was just trying to like, I'm just like tired of everyone's, you know, garbage and I'm trying to figure this out. And it's just, it became kind of me being questioning myself a little bit more. Yeah. But what really shook me to my core was on February, 2021, I got a phone call. And in this phone call, I found out that my friend had died by suicide. Mm. And I was just in a loop because this girl was in my head. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful, smart, kind, humble. Um, she was an intern at our company at the time and she was, everyone loved her. So she was brilliant, talented. And then she was about to graduate from university. She got a lot of awards and everyone loved her. And then just out of a whim, she goes, eh, actually, I kind of want to see if I can like get into like graduate school. Let me just try to apply to MIT. She got in. So like, this is like, it's this talks to like the level of brilliance that this beautiful woman had. Yeah. So for me, when I got this, le when I, you know, got the call, I was so confused. And then the next day after I got her suicide letter. And mm -hmm. I was just so confused. I was like, this beautiful girl that I thought of as my little sister, I mm -hmm. would hold her hand as we crossed the street. I would yeah. give her lectures on why she needs to drink water and, and learn how to make rice, like all these things. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I lost a sister. I lost a little sister. And I was just, I don't know why. Yeah. And I was reading this letter of hers and slowly like things started to click. And what I mean by that is there are certain things that she expressed in her letter, how she feels terrible for not being happy because she had so many things. Yeah. She didn't know why. She said that she wanted to do the right thing. She wanted to do the best things. She wanted, to, she was living life the way, the right way, the only right way to live. That was a, mm -hmm. the word phrasing. Yeah. And it was in that moment where everything just, just clicked. Wow. And, she was, and I realized in that moment that she was telling my story back to me. Yeah. And the reason why I say that's because five years from 2021, five years ago, prior, I was contemplating taking my own life as well. And the reason why is because to take you guys back is when when I was feeling like I was doing everything, I wasn't getting the validation. When I would speak up, I was met with so much criticism and negative energy and feedback. I just thought, what's the point? Like I'm living yeah. life the way that all these people are telling me to do, but it doesn't matter what I want. So like, is this what life is? Like, right. is this it? And that just caused me to like at that moment, caused me to just not want to be here anymore right and luckily I had a friend that I was you know expressing this to and she said all these people who push these expectations on you are literally not giving a crap about what you're doing right now right they just push their expectations and like leave and expect you to like whatever yeah they don't care. and yet you're in this dark hole you're being a pushover and letting these people push you around with all their expectations right and that's what pulled me out from that dark place realizing like I'm not the issue all these people are saying all this random stuff to me pushing their preferences down on me and they're not even focusing on themselves right like, this is insane enough is enough yes and this is what you see all over society everybody has an opinion everybody tries to push their preference on everybody else but they're not focusing on themselves they are focusing on everybody else and the way everybody else should live the way everybody else should dress the way everybody should live their life you know and it's not what it's not what everybody should do you need to we all need to focus on what makes us happy as a person and those are the things we have to focus on and people shouldn't care what other people like or what other people want to do or how other people want to dress or how other people want to live their life or what their beliefs are or what na their nationality is 
that's that's their life, their preference. That's a part of them, and it's it shouldn't be a part of your life and your thoughts and your and your opinions. You know, and people think because especially in America, you live in a free country. Well, we should be able to voice our our opinions all the time. Well, I say you could voice your opinion as long as you're not hurting the other person. Because I see nowadays, I see a lot of people voicing their opinion, but they're hurting others. So is, is that really right? You know, mm -hmm. and I, I think I think people have to really take that in consideration when when, you know, it, life is not as rosy as people make it on the media and it's not as rosy as people make it on TV. You know, people have this perception, they see things and they believe it, you know, and, and same thing goes all over the Internet. You know, life isn't as rosy as as everybody makes it. And it's really about, you know self-discovery like you were talking about earlier and really discovering who you are as a person now maybe you can go deeper into that and dive deeper into how you discovered who you were and maybe explain who that person was and how you actually got there yeah so as I you know read this letter and things everything just I was spiraling like for a good couple of weeks like I was just so confused and when I finally made the realization that it was society that made me feel this way, it's not my parents, it's not my friends, it's no, it's society as a whole collective, gave everyone else the impression that these are the things that you need to do. So I just started spiraling and the spiral that I went through was, why did I go into engineering? Do I really like this job or is it because it's a job that looks good on paper? Right. Why do I like the color blue? Do I even like the color pink? Like why? Like, like little details, like people, I kind of laugh because it's funny at the time, it's funny now, but at the time, like questioning whether I like the color pink or blue, yeah. or questioning why I like, why I like ankle socks versus crew neck socks, like things yeah. like that, like every detail, when I tell you every detail, every detail about myself, I judged everything. Mm -hmm. And it was only when the pandemic hit and we were all told to go home and stay home. And it was during that two year period yes. where we were forced to be with ourselves yes when I started to reconnect with myself and the and the reason why I say that's critical is because the reason why I was spiraling is because I didn't know who I was right during the pandemic when you're forced to be alone and you had to be inside your bubble and whenever your people in your bubble are busy what do you do you just go for a walk or right. you read a book or you stay in your house and clean you just do something to occupy your time and it was through that being alone with myself I started to hear my thoughts again yeah and these are different thoughts these are thoughts of oh my god do they like it oh my god will they approve these are thought random memories that would pop up random things that would come up and the more and more that I just let those thoughts come up and not even like disregard them I let them come up and I'd be like oh that's interesting as I start to do that that's when I start to recall memories and instances and things about things that I loved as a kid things that I brought that actually brought me joy scenarios where I had to conform or change myself because of someone else's expectations or preferences yeah and all these things started to come up and then I was I got so curious then I started to get into meditation because I wanted to invite more of these thoughts in and the reason yeah. why is because um, a lot of us and even myself we spend decades telling our voices that we don't matter that our real voice is not going to be accepted our real soul is not going to be accepted so you're telling the soul, you literally cram it into a cave and you tell it, don't come out. Right. Then all of a sudden you're now, you're telling that little voice to come out. Why would they come out? You told them to stay in for decades. Yeah. So imagine it's like, you're luring this little voice, this little part of you out of this cave and telling you it's going to be okay. And that's what this process became. Mm -hmm. It became like me telling my inner, inner child, inner soul, whatever you want to call it. It's okay to come out, come out slowly. It's kind of like reintroducing them to the light again. Yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, meditation really helped me because I start to like visualize and see memories and collect ideas and thoughts that were my own, not from the media, not from my family, not from my friends, not from any partner I was with. Like it came from me. Yes. And then this then <laughs> the next funny thing is I got too many thoughts in my head and I didn't know what to do with it. I was like too many things. I was so overwhelmed. So the next step for myself was journaling. Mm hmm. Because for me, think about it like there's a scene in Harry Potter where Dumbledore would pull his memory out and put in like a little pot for you <laughs> Harry Potter fanatics. Um, but that's kind of what journaling is to me. Yeah. Is 
you have so much in your head. You just need to pull everything out and put it on a piece of paper and see it in front of you. Yes. And it could, there could be a structure to it. There could, doesn't have to be a structure to it. Right. Um, but for me, as I was journaling, I was able to see these thoughts and I started to ask myself, you know, reflective questions and go through all these questions. And through these, I was able to see my thoughts and I kept all my journals. I recommend, I know a lot of people have a stigma to journaling. You mm-hmm. don't have to be a writer. You don't have to spell things correctly. No one's going to see this but you. Yeah. So just allow yourself to just be so vulnerable. It's literally you and a piece of paper. There's no one else judging you. No exactly. one's going to, you can hide your journal if you want to. <laughs> Some people even burn it after, but I personally recommend that you guys keep everything you write in your journal. I still mm-hmm. keep all my journals because it's so amazing to reflect back on your journey and see yes. the worries and your thoughts two years ago versus now because that's so much growth you don't realize even yeah. months um you can see how your worries and sh- your perspective shift and having a record of that is so beautiful yeah so for me that's what journaling gave me you know a chance to kind of get everything out there organize my thoughts if I I noticed one time I was journaling and I was just journaling for the sake of just getting everything out and then right. I realized that I had a theme of you know needing to you know like not being around people that didn't make me feel like I could be myself, being around right. people that made me feel I could hide myself. And that I wouldn't have realized that if I didn't keep any of my journals and I read back because eventually everything clicks because as you're meditating, journaling, you're you're thinking about it like everything is like slowly starting to shift into place. And then when yeah. it clicks, it clicks. And that's like the biggest epiphany and aha moment. And it could be, you know, when you're walking, when you're cleaning. So it's so critical to just have a journal you could be even on your phone on I know a lot of people do phone but I'm a little bit old school I like journals <laughs> um so it's it's so beautiful and the final thing that I that significantly helped me in my self discovery journey is well there's two more one is temperature checks I call them mm-hmm. so as you're beginning to realize what you like and what you enjoy the next thing is you know, when you're out in the world, you don't have your journal with you. You're not able yeah. to just randomly just drop into meditation exactly. in the middle of, you know, imagine. But <laughs> um, in this case, you need to do temperature checks. And these are important because whenever you feel, if you're about to make a decision, if you someone tells you to do something and you just don't respond right away, just sit with it. Right. Tell them you'll get back to them. It could be like even a minute pause. I'm not telling you to sit there for 15 minutes and while the person is in front of you, you can you can excuse yourself or you can say, hey, let right. me get back to you. Sit with yourself. And how do you feel? Mm-hmm. Do you feel anxious? Does something feel uneasy? Do you feel tension? Do you have right. a lump in your throat? And I call these temperature checks and they don't take long. It could be like a quick 60 second scan of your body. Do you feel anything in your body? Yeah. Do you feel uncomfortable? Do you feel happy, excited? Because right. that's how you know if you're actually okay with doing something or you don't want to. Yes, so true. And it can start small. I I started out with, every time when we'd order food, someone would be like, oh, we want sushi. Yeah. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever you guys want. But then there are days where I'll be like, I don't want sushi. <laughs> speak up. But the thing is, people find it so silly, but like something as simple as whether you want sushi or pizza is important. Right. Because what you're saying is what you're putting into your body doesn't matter. And saying if it doesn't matter, if you say, oh, it doesn't matter, just pick whatever you want. Like you're telling yourself what you are putting into your body does not matter. Right. And it's okay if you if you speak up and they say, hey, can we do sushi or pizza another time? That's great. That's fine. I'm not telling you yeah. be the block in everyone's plans. It's just <laughs> speak up and see if, you know, the crowd is willing to move with you. And if you're yeah. able to negotiate and compromise, like, so all that stuff matters. and these temperature checks are so, so important. And I still do do them to this day. Whenever, you know, I'll be in a meeting and if the meeting is a very hostile meeting, I'll I'll feel anxious and I don't feel comfortable. I will literally, you know, like try to ground myself by like putting my hands on my tummy because no one sees what you're doing under that desk, right? Right, exactly. No one will say anything if you're just giving yourself a hug or just, you know, holding your elbows, like all that matters. You can excuse yourself from the the meeting and say, Hey, just got to grab a you know, cup of water and have a, like a minute, just do that breath work and see how you're feeling. Because if you're feeling anxious, like the sooner you, if you're able to connect to what you're feeling, yes. it's easier for you to deal with it. Cause if you don't know what's going on, imagine like you have all these alarms going off in your body and you don't know right. what's going on. Like that causes you to go into a bigger spiral. Yeah. These temperature checks are so important. And the final thing is just be open to the process and exploring because so many people think that 
figuring out who you are or life is just a straight line that's going upwards to like a peak Mm -hmm. but like okay when you meet reach that peak say that you're 29 30 40 so what you have more life left are you just done life at that point no exactly life is a cycle and it keeps going and who you are changes and Mm -hmm. the base like the way that I want people to think about is when you're a kid you're not the same person as you are now. You've changed. You've grown. I used to yeah. hate spinach. Now I love spinach. Now I put spinach <laughs> in everything. So <laughs> something like that, where people just, I just want them to remember that the self-discovery process, figuring out who you are changes constantly. And that is okay. Yes. Because when people, so when someone says, who are you? Like I always respond to who, I, well, I can tell you who I am right now. Right. Right. And you, and you speak to more of your passions. Don't speak to, oh, I'm a, for myself, I'm an engineer, wife, daughter. Oh yeah. I work out like that's so superficial. Yeah. Like I like to say like, oh, I love the outdoors because I love to be, you know, feel that sense of peace and, you know, calmness. I love, you know, being on water because water has a calming sense to me. I love eating new foods because I love, you know, just trying new things and exploring. I love doing this with family because, and it's just going on like that, like that is more of a holistic picture of who you are versus you just stating your freaking accomplishments on the side because you are more than your accomplishments. Oh, yes. That's so true. And I think I think what you said today was amazing because I I think people don't realize these things, you know, and we are constantly changing and we are constantly evolving. They say every seven years you change. And I Mm -hmm. I think it's so true because every I've noticed every seven years, you know, I'm no longer the same person I was before. And sometimes people will will, like they're shocked if I say or do something. But that was, you know, the person you're referring to, you know, was several years ago. That's not me anymore, you know, and Mm -hmm. people have to realize that and people have to respect that too, because Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest problems in our society is the lack of respect for other human beings. You know, Mm -hmm. we're a very judgmental society. And I think we really need to, you know, not so be so judgmental and really think about, you know, you can't say anything until you walk through that person's shoes. And once you've walked through that person's shoes, then you have the right to make a comment. But until you walk through that person's shoes and live that person's life, Mm -hmm. you have no idea what it's like to be them. And if you did walk through their shoes, you might most likely 99.99999% would be to have a totally different viewpoint than what you have at this moment you know yeah, yeah and that's why like a lot of people that I work with I had a, a girlfriend that called me the other day and she just was crying in tears and she goes I feel like I'm wasting my life I don't know what I'm doing like but I'm doing everything right and she's extremely got amazing degree amazing job husband house everything pets actually like on the outside looks like she's living her life but she, she is crying in a parking lot, calling me, being, and, and she, when I ask her, why do you feel like you're wasting your life? Like, what would you rather be doing? And her answer was, I don't know. Yeah. And that's what bothers me because there's so many people like my friend that are absolutely oh. amazing and yeah. just you have so much within you. There's so much li- to life. And that's why that's like my mission. Like I need to get out there and, and work with these women and children and kids who you know, who go through life that, you know, they don't know why they're not happy and they feel like they're just going through and they're missing something and they're chasing yeah. something, but they don't know what that is. And that's where I come in to help you figure that out. There are so many people, I know so many people in their forties and fifties, and it's that, that purpose in life. What is my true purpose? And it's something inside them that's missing. They don't know what it is, but they don't feel complete. There is a missing piece to the puzzle in their life. And it doesn't even matter how how well your life is. You're maybe married to the greatest guy on the planet. You might ha- live in a wonderful home. You might have all the materialistic things you need. You know, life, you, you probably have that perfect, you could have that perfect, you know, white pivot, pivot uh, fence, you know, picket mm-hmm. fence. But you're not happy because there's something missing. That true purpose, I think everyone has to feel that they're here for a purpose. You know, we're as humans, you know, mo- for the most part, most humans want to feel recognized as uh, self accomplished, you know, that they're here, they've accomplished a specific something and something that brings them happiness. Because you can go in the, in the working world, you could do really good at your job, but you can go into that world and not be really that happy every time you go to go to work. And no matter how good you are at your job, 
But when yeah. you're doing something you really love, that goes back to your self-discovery, you know, then life changes. Now, when you went through the self-discovery process and you discovered who you were and what your true purpose was in life, how, what was the change like for you? Like what changes did you see in your own life? I felt like I lost like 10 pounds. Like I've, I, my family, my sister always uh, like makes a joke be like, oh, you used to be such an angry person. <laughs> be so stressed. Or like I have my friends commenting being like, your vibe is so like chill now. Like you're so much happier. And, and that's true because I was chasing money, status, relationship. But now that I realize like that's not everything that it, there is in life. Like now I'm chasing experiences. Now I'm chasing love and joy. Now I'm, ex you know, chasing like passion and like moments of just like fun and just you know just joy yeah. um and that shifts everything because in my head like if I think about it like if they take money for example yeah yeah you can chase all the money in the world but then the government's going to find a way to take it anyways yeah something exactly. always is going to be unexpected and you're going to have to pay more you can mm -hmm. save as much as money as you want but something's going to happen your furnace is going to shut down your car is going to you know need a new um chain or whatever and right your money's gonna leave you so what's the point of money then in this case right like money exactly. value keeps changing like look at the economy right now so yeah. many people are struggling so like why are we chasing after money if money is not really that valuable anymore and that's yeah. like that that kind of shifted in me as well and now in my head I'm like okay well I still have my moments where I'm like oh my god like the government says I owe them this much money like oh I'll, I'll still have that moment but then in my head I'm just like you know what like they're gonna like money just comes and goes anyways like yep. if I need more money I I use my line of credit then I pay it off eventually like I have a partner that can help support me it's kind of like there's always nothing's ever gonna stay in one side like one yeah. side of the balance it's always going to be shifting it's always going to be a cycle there's ups and downs so once you acknowledge that there's always going to be ups and downs like when you have a down you know it's gonna there's going to be an up yeah and the thing, the whole, I think before my career decisions have changed, before I was uh, on a set track to be director, and then I turned that position down, actually, because it didn't align with my values. I didn't want to be, I loved, I love working with people. Yeah. But then when I realized, like, I had to go more into the corporate space and deal with more politics and all, I just, no, I said, no, this is not my path. Right. And if you had asked me, you know, six, seven years ago, where do I land? What's my career goals? I would have told you, oh, be VP of this department. Yeah. And get a big house and get a big car. And now I'm just like, I'm okay with like a bungalow house. I'm okay with my Mazda CX-5 that has rusting on the side. That's okay. <laughs> like as long as I get to travel three times a year, as long as I get to do weekend road trips, like yeah. that is my more of my focus. Right. So I feel like now when things go wrong or when, for example, um, someone, I, I'm not afraid of disappointing anyone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I'm not technically disappointing you. I'm just telling you whether I can do something or not, or I'm telling you whether I'm okay with something or not. And if it's not okay with you, then you can go find another way to do it, or you can find another person. Yeah. So it's kind of like there's not one way to do things. And for me, having that shift in a mindset has made me feel so much lighter. Right. And, to, you know, mind you and me, like when I still have moments where I have to like kind of pull myself back and be like, okay, hold on, let's take a minute, do a temperature check. Right. See how I am. And it always, you know, you, you, you can allow yourself to have, you know, time for you to grieve and go through your emotions. I'm not telling you never do that. You have to do that. Yeah. Because that helps you kind of move through it. But always know that things are always going to come and go. Things will go bad and get better and you know, people come and go and leave. And that's just once you accept the flow to everything, and it's just a cycle mm -hmm. and a process. Yeah, I feel like it just takes so much stress off of everyone. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Totally. I think that's the problem is that people sometimes they they focus on the, the things in life that don't really bring to true happiness. But in their eyes, they think it's it's going to be make make them happy. But, mm -hmm. you know, they, it doesn't. You know, because once a lot of people get to that point, if they do make, you know, monetary success, they're still the same person. They still mm -hmm. are not happy. They're still not feeling fulfilled because, you know, materialistic things won't do that. 
you know, mm-hmm. you know, they won't change your level of happiness. It might make your life a little bit more convenient in certain areas, but it certainly won't bring you happiness, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think what you're doing is great now, right now, what are you focusing on? Like, what are you doing? You've been on a journey of self-discovery and now you're trying to help children and, and other women, you know, find their true selves. And mm-hmm. so tell me a little bit more about what you're doing right now to help others. Yeah. So um, I right now I do a lot of one on one coaching because I feel like being in that personal space with you and just really having you just feel comfortable and in a create just creating a space where you can talk talk to me about whether you're spiraling or whether you don't know whether your life is yours or someone else's and that's yeah. where I come in and help you and when you do realize that hey you're living a life of someone else's not yours yeah then I help guide you and help you know. Um, you help you rediscover it because technically if you think about it this is a rebirth yeah when you're you know last time you had a birth your mother and father were there and there's all these other people and you're crying and screaming but now it's like it's whole because you have more senses you have more brain uh, like uh, neurons and everything so it's more overwhelming and like I mentioned earlier I spiraled so my job is to not prevent like to help guide you so that it's not a spiral, it's more just of a like a little path that we're walking yeah. through together. And I'm just there to help kind of be that person where you can truly be vulnerable. With, and I help you understand what to what you truly want to do in your life and how to navigate those difficult conversations with people in your life. Yeah. Because you went from people pleasing to now you're saying, oh, okay, I want to stand up for myself. Right. So a lot of people think you just go from one shift to the other. And that's not how it is unfortunately it's something that takes time and I'm here to help you through that time and help you you know ask the questions that really you need to ask yourself yeah and I help I've helped so many people through workshops and mentoring and and just events and where I just kind of ask them to really go deep within themselves and figure out what they really want right and me finding that click and seeing it when it clicks with them yeah it's like the most beautiful feeling ever because a person's whole energy just changes they just bright and they're just more you know lively yeah so that's what I do on the side I do a lot of coaching and and mentoring and just a lot of you know events on the side where I just try to help people just even if they can walk away with asking themselves am I really living a life for me that is that will help you leaps and bounds because once you start asking yourself that question that's amazing but I'm here to guide you through the rest Right. Right. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, if you wanted to give like some takeaways of everything that we discussed, because we discussed a lot of things mm-hmm. and you shared your beautiful story, which was amazing. And I thank you for sharing that because it's not easy. It's definitely not an easy uh, story to share. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, it, it, you know, it brings back a lot of memories and a lot of things that you had to go through, your parents had to go through, family members and friends had to go through. Um, but if you wanted to take everything we talked about today, what would be some important things you'd like to emphasize? Mm -hmm. Life isn't a straight line. It's a, it's a process. It's a journey. And the sooner you accept the process and the flow, the easier life becomes because you're, you're not here to reach a peak. You're here to live and experience life. You're not here to tick off boxes. And the key takeaways are if you want to you know, really go through this journey and really embrace yourself. It's so important for you to take away time for yourself yeah. through journaling, meditation, and temperature check-ins. I do have a, a free guide that I give where literally it's it asks you the questions that you should be asking yourself. It could be on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And from right. these questions, and it really helps you dig deep. It's not about the superficial questions of what did I find good today or what made me sad today. It's deeper yeah. questions yeah. and through this free guide it just helps you kind of just sit with yourself make a date out of it yeah Get yourself chocolate and wine you know light a candle because it's really important for you to kind of just really ask yourself those questions in this guide and helps you figure out where you are in your journey and what yeah. you need to do um and another thing is just it's it's so important to ground yourself during this journey because it could feel overwhelming. I know I lashed out a lot during my journey because I didn't have a person with me to help guide me and I didn't have the tools that I have now to help guide me. So it's so important to ground yourself during this journey. Yeah. And you know, if if anyone ever out there needs any help, 
I'm here to help. That's my mission. That's my purpose. So please feel free to reach out to me. And I, I offer free consultation calls to figure out, you know, where you are in your journey and, and how I can help you and what you can do. Um, you will all walk away from these calls with at least one piece of information that can help yourself grow. That's beautiful. Now, where can people find you on the website? Yeah, so I think the easiest way to do this is my Instagram or TikTok. Okay. Um, I have the same handle. Um, it's at Nell, N-E-L, and then my last name, R-A-J-E-S-A-N. Or it's very simple. Um, fun fact is I'm the only Nell Anthony Raw Jason in the world. So <laughs> if you just search up my first name, I promise you, you will find me. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it extra easy for all of you guys. But please, I would love for you guys, I love to hear people's stories because I just get so much happiness and joy in helping other people find their happiness and joy. Oh, I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. Uh, you have been a, a wonderful guest. I hope you come on the show more often. And, you know, because really your story is truly a blessing. You know, you really give inspiration and you just, you really open people's eyes, you know, and help people realize that they're not alone. And mm -hmm. I think that's so important. You know, it doesn't matter you know, that stories aren't aligned exactly. You know, you could take one piece of little information from a story that you could relate to and a bond could be formed and something you said or a piece of advice you give can change a person's life. So I, I commend you on what you're doing and I commend you for, you know, giving up a portion of your life to help others. You know, that's a, a wonderful wonderful contribution to the, to our society. And I thank you for that. And I, I hope you'll come back and I hope we can continue this conversation because you're, you're wonderful. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I had a amazing time. Oh, uh, have a great day.